Hello, my name is Ruthie Berger. I'll be talking to you today about our recent paper in Trends in Microbiology titled The Potential Impact of Co-Infection on Antimicrobial Chemotherapy and Drug Resistance. Drug resistance is a major growing problem in public and animal health. For many pathogens, co-infection with another strain or pathogen is the rule rather than the exception. But the role played by co-infecting pathogens on the evolution of resistance is largely understudied. Therefore, in this review, we present information on the mechanisms by which co-infecting pathogens can interact and hypothesize as to how these interactions might impact resistance evolution. We can place these interactions on a scale from antagonistic, one pathogen will limit the growth rate of the other, likely to curb resistance, to synergistic, one pathogen will increase the growth rate of the other, likely to promote resistance. We organize our review around two main mechanisms of interaction, immune modulation and resource modulation. Immune responses to one pathogen may be impacted by another. One or both pathogens may suppress the immune system, reducing the rate at which pathogens are killed, thereby potentially promoting resistance via several routes. For example, faster pathogen replication can mean a higher probability of the emergence of de novo drug resistance. Faster pathogen replication can also mean more symptoms and thus more treatment, which can increase the selective pressure for resistant mutants. On the antagonistic end of the spectrum, if two co-infecting pathogens are similar enough, they may be subject to cross-immunity, meaning the immune response to one also acts in controlling the other. Pathogens rely on a wide range of host resources, access to which can be impacted by co-infection. On the synergistic side, cooperative behavior among bacteria can lead to biofilm formation. Also, Flu pre-infection can improve the adherence of a later bacterial infection to epithelial cells. On the antagonistic side, if two pathogens rely on the same resource, one pathogen may be outcompeted by another. In particular, a resistant pathogen may pay a fitness cost, and so could be less able to compete. One result of this is that chemotherapy that controls symptoms but allows survival of a small pathogen population may be helpful in preventing entry or growth of a less fit, resistant mutant. Not all interactions are immune or resource-based. Some pathogens can synthesize molecular compounds that directly attack competitors. Resistance can also be transmitted between pathogens or commensal bacteria via horizontal gene transfer. Interactions can also be drug-mediated, such as collateral selection, when the treatment of one pathogen selects for resistance in another because it is not the optimal dose for the co-infecting pathogen. Our review has helped identify several important outstanding questions, such as, how can we predict population-level consequences for mechanistic interactions at the within-host level? Should treatment be intensified in the presence of an immunosuppressive co-infection to compensate for the impaired killing by the immune system? At the population scale, should co-infected individuals be prioritized for treatment when there are limited resources? Our review also underscores the pressing need for empirical research targeted at co-infection and drug resistance at the within host and population levels. This paper was co-authored by me, Ruthie Berger, Roger Cuyos, Ted Cohen, Emily Griffiths, Sylvia Hyben, Michael Minna, Victoria Volkova, Brian Grenfell, and Jessica Metcalf.